Oh, my friends, I have so, so, so very much to catch you up on. We're back, and if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like. That would be most wonderful. So, I also, I hope you had a great Christmas and New Year, those of you that celebrate it. And that's kind of where I've been uh, for the past sort of week and a half. But now back and ready to tackle Iceland, sort of. We, like I said, much to explain. So we left last episode on many questions about not just the situation with the club, but the affiliate situation, all sorts. And I've been doing a lot of bit of research. Some of you guys have been helping me. And here's the conclusion we've come to. In fact, you'll notice there's a lot of different things on the screen right now. More to come in that, essentially. So, first things first. My name fix broke the name of the club originally. Um, so it turns out we weren't even managing the club that we thought we were. This is the club we are actually managing. Um, again, not going to try and do the first full name here. KV is the name of the team. That's why their badge said KV and not KF. But I've managed to update them, so that's all sorted now. And they've got their new logo in as well. We also have kits generated by Nine Mains Kit Basher. Uh, they would generate automatically. The whole league has them. If you want to do this yourself too, most of you will have already seen it, but I did a video about this a few weeks ago. If you just literally type in Kit Basher into YouTube, you'll find it. So that's the first big elephant in the room ticked off. The second one was the weird situation with the affiliate agreement that we had with another club, which now will make a lot more sense now that we're actually the team we think we are. But essentially, yes, we are their B team. And as far as I know, we are unable to get promoted, I think. But wouldn't it be fun to try? Maybe they'd relegate them or something. Maybe we could swap over or do a really good job and maybe they'll let us take over the A team. Who knows? I have to ask Mr. T first, of course. But we do, of course, have a shared youth team and that was all absolutely correct. So yeah, a strange one. Now we found ourselves, of course, uh, in the middle of the winter here. It's dark, it's cold, and it's uh, actually quite lovely. But we've now basically got a couple of months to build ourselves a team ready for the start of the season. Now, just to catch you up in terms of the money situation as well, because I realize it has been a while. We have a lot of it uh, for the league we're at. Four grand a week in wage budget. Bearing in mind, we only have three players, as far as I know, that are on actual wages. So that helps. And a little bit of transfer fund. And even cash in the bank. What more do you want, eh? Other than maybe not being a B team? So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to try and build a squad from scratch. I've never actually had to do this before. And I think this is going to be rather fun. So join me for this adventure, won't you? A couple of things I made notes of last time. Thank you, past Matt. Is that we need to do a bit of training setups. I've already sorted out the tactic situation. And we also need to, I don't know, hire staff. So we need... A head of youth development, a couple of coaches, director of football. We've actually got some room for some scouts, in fairness. We've, we have some room, friends. Now, whether anyone will actually want to join us or not is a different matter, but let's just start from the top, shall we, with a hoid. Hmm. Ah. So, a slight problem has emerged. So... <laughs> Oh, God. So because I don't have an assistant manager, I can't ask him to filter it by realistic candidates. J do you reckon that um, Wolfgang Grober might fancy it? Uh, something tells me he might not, you know. So now I have to try and find a way to get an assistant manager without knowing if I'm able to get an assistant manager. See, the problem we now have is that there's 1,500 of them. And I mean, yes, obviously, Roberto Samadan isn't going to join us as an assistant manager. Problem being... I don't know who will, and I think the only option we've really got is doing it by finding the worst ones, really. I just need to find one guy. Just one lad. It doesn't have to even be any good. Okay, so I've added in world reputation as a column. We're going to use this to find our next boy. Th this could take us a while. Just trying to find anyone who's Icelandic. N uh, mm, yeah, okay. At least he was willing to talk to us. Sort of. Okay, this guy wanted 150. We could maybe, maybe make this work. I'm kind of offering him all the bonuses I can. I'll give him a top division wage rise. Little does he know. Yes! I don't know why he dropped from 130 to 100 in one jump, but Christian Omar Bjornsson might well have just... I mean, I realise that we've kind of leveraged ourselves to the hilt here, but needs must and all that. And, and he's not even that bad, I think. No, he's actually legitimately not too bad. Motivation and people management are actually genuinely good. That's as manager, Matt. What are you doing here? Even his judging, like, for this level, he's okay. If we could just get him in, right? And now, of course, got to wait for that to happen before I can do anything else. And without him, we can't really do anything else. Because that actually took me like 25 minutes just to find a scout, a, a, an assistant manager that was willing to talk to us. Love seeing our shirt on the wall. That's lovely. How does it feel to be the new manager? You can't win it, can you? Usually when you have a large gap, they're like, why exactly did you be such a lazy bastard for like two years before going back to management? And now they're like, you seem a bit eager, aren't you? Go back to your old club. I don't think they like me all that much, particularly after I accuse one of them of, well, crime. Club seems short stuff. Thank you for noticing, Ori. Trying to rectify it. In fact, if I wasn't answering these dumb questions, I'd be doing that now. Oh, thank God. Thank God for that. Okay, we've been saved. Welcome aboard, Christian. Could I instead pay you that? No. Right. I wish I could filter it by reasonable wages. Come on, give me 100. 
Yes! He's not very good, but he is at least a warm body. He's an entity. It's also just occurred to me I was using the assistant manager filter for this, which might explain why I wasn't seeing quite what I was looking for. But nevertheless, he's pretty good. And he, oh, he plays a 4-4-2. Damn it! I clicked on the wrong guy. I clicked on the wrong guy. <laughs> I was trying to click on Haithar Adresson, who plays a back five. I'm just, he's got one management. I mean, actually, wow, he actually has eight. Wow, I've just absolutely lucked out there. <laughs> I mean, his knowledge is crap. But I couldn't even see his working with youngsters. I really only care about how good they are at physioics. And look at that. No, no way. Amateur physio. Which, again, I feel like being an amateur physio is a bad idea. Like, you should really have some kind of professional qualifications here. It's like saying, hey, I'm an amateur doctor. Just, it's like Dr. Nick Riviera's joining us. What's hi, everybody, in Icelandic? Fortnightly staff meeting. In attendance. The only other member of staff at the entire club. This is less of a meeting, more a romantic table for two. And I'm fine with that, honestly. Let's crack on. Here we go. 31-year-old scout. Bam. Another scout. Bam. So where's the head scout gone? Here they all come. This is better. Surely we wouldn't be able to sign him, right? Because he'd be better than what we currently have. Must register at least eight players trained by the club. That's going to be difficult, given that we don't have eight players. Seems we're not the only ones interested in this fella. Would you believe? Something tells me we'll be making the use of the trial system uh, quite a lot again. And hopefully some loans from our big boy team. So now he is interested and they were letting him go for free. I mean, how much can we... Uh, well, I am actually going to do that, in fairness. So maybe that's something I could actually agree to. Yeah, this keeps coming up, but what can I do about that? We, Unless I can find players that actually ever that trained with us, which is going to be almost impossible. Although I can filter it, I think. He'd still be on way less than everybody else. What's the most I can... I can what the fuck? I love that that's considered red. Yeah, I can offer £500 a week. Like, if he actually wants to join us on £65 a week, then he's more than welcome to it. Just to clarify, I've just looked at uh, players trained at us. Uh, that'd be zero. <laughs> that would be zero. And a load more players have just appeared in our scouting options too. I'm sorry, what? He actually said yes. Brecky Thor Hermanson actually said yes. We just asked the board for a coaching course. We've got good money. Hopefully they'll say yes straight off the bat because we can afford it. Yes! There you go. National B license. The board were just like, you get it, Sonny Jim. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, this is better. Some of them... Tom Holland. I don't know. He's busy with Spider-Man... Can we really afford to take up that much of his time? What a brilliant name. Danny Valencia. Danny Tobar Valencia. In case he breaks down. Oh, he's a regen. Saidu Sanu. Oh. Mm. Okay, what is that finishing? He intrigues the hell out of me. Now, he's not the quickest, which is weird, um, but he's reasonable on both feet as well. Okay, we actually have an attacking midfielder in Alfred Ajerovic, was released by Kumla. Hmm. Oh, wow, he's actually okay. Dribbling, terrible, but... Passing and vision, all right. With a lot of these lads, it's just going to be a question of having them here for a while, getting an idea of what we actually want and what we're able to get, and then trying to make some signings, essentially. So it's probably going to be a little bit before we actually start bringing some of these lads in. But it's just a question of what we actually can get, because the last thing we want to do is start rushing a load of signings and then go, oh, crap, we could have got way better players. I mean, season preview puts us bottom by a considerable margin. Oh, my giddy aunt. <laughs> Look at this selection. There's a guy called Madrid. Juan Sebastian Madrid. There's also this lad. Six foot four, but he's actually quick and has an insane amount of natural fitness. Oh, yeah. And this guy who was released by Santos. It's Cadu. Look at the tackling on the man. There's not... I mean, hey, th there is actually probably enough chairs present in this picture to house every single player in the squad for once. Got some more ridiculous... Age. This guy was released by Monaco. Tell you what, right? At this level, agent offers are overpowered. Now, it might just be that these guys are going to want ludicrous money and we'll never be able to sign them, but it's interesting. This guy was released by Baron Kia and... Good lord. I mean, this guy's wanted by ridiculous sides, so let's just try it. He's actually interested in talking to us. That's what? No way. Bear in mind, he's under a bid from AGF. There's no way he chooses us. I'm really liking this uh, Sigurdal Greta Benny Onsen. He's been scoring a lot for us in, pre -se in these preseason games. Finishing a solid. Composure does lack, which is just... A sad fact of life. But he can play deeper too. But the guy seems to be banging them away in preseason. Ah, yeah, no. He wants £600 a week. I, I figured. He's been released by a Colombian top flight side. He's probably not going to come here for £200 a week. We have just lost uh, Kaldal, our striker as well, because he's joining a team for £250 a week and there's nothing we can do about it. I think it's about time we had a look through some of these trial players now because I feel like we're going to get to that point soon where there's going to be other clubs starting to come in and put bids on them. And we want to snap up any we can now that we want. I mean, look at this, some of these guys. So Koulibaly, we're... We're bidding on him, but like, come on. I don't see that going our way because he's already got a bid on the table. But if we could get in there soon on some of the other guys, you never know. So someone like Malcolm Palacios, 19-year-old Colombian, released by Baron Kia. Aggression's great. Bravery's better than the other guy. He's not the quickest, but he's great in the air. Heading's not superb, but his tackling, marking, and positioning are solid. If there's any way 
of getting this guy. No way. I mean, we've we've offered him the contract. If he accepts, then we might have just signed an absolute... But how? He can play wingback. Okay, the dribbling isn't great, but come on, look at the rest of him. It's worth a punt, surely. I guess with some of these guys having been released, they're just taking anything at this point, and I'm willing to offer it to them. And I think I want to try to offer uh, Benny Unson a contract as well because he's actually performed well in our system which let's face it the composure worries me but then we saw how good gabriel Peterson was in front of goal with 13 composure so <laughs> these are the things eh he is at least more dominant in the air though he has zero stamina do not ask this man to run i've given up on the idea of trying to sign anyone that feats, meets the requirement of players trained at this club because there literally are none that we can sign in the entirety of iceland uh, at the moment that we're willing to sign for us i should stress there's alfred ajarovic who could maybe be a backup in that role or could play deeper should we need him to but yeah the main reason i'm doing this now is because I want to try to get a couple of these guys in before we have to start playing actual matches and before anyone else starts to notice them here. Okay, so a born midfielder in Birkir Thor Guthmanson. Six foot four, decent tackling marking, positioning isn't spectacular, but teamwork and work rate are very high. He might be the ideal man for that born in midfield role and he only wants an amateur contract. And then there's also this guy who again could cover both there and there. Great determination as well and tall. Given his age as well... I think it's unlikely he's going to get any Iceland caps, so we might be able to keep his wage down with an international wage clause. Yeah, I think it's almost impossible not to try to sign him. It will depend on his money, obviously. See where that leaves us based on who actually says yes to these contracts and then see where we need strengthening after that with what's left and obviously bring in some more guys too. We can cancel a few trials. Just looking through the players we've got contract offers out for, even if they all accepted, which imagine, that was still only 1.2k. Oh, okay, so Marvin Daddy Steinerson, the first player to accept a contract for us that gives us two keepers which is so useful just because same goes for Ajarovic. uh although weirdly he seems to have lost a bit of knowledge of him which is odd uh but he is now going to be joining us too but really it's palacios and kadu we sign those two and our defense suddenly goes hello bergeson also in and Guthmanson too as a ball winner midfielder okay so juan sebastian madrid has joined karlstad not a huge surprise there and kula bali wow okay um he didn't accept a lot of money there, did he? But I can understand why a player like Mamadou Koulibaly would join them over us. Let's face it, they're top flight. We're in the second tier of Iceland. On the plus side, though, Seydou Sainu has agreed to join. For That's a really nice piece of business, I think. We just took a draw with Breitherblik of the top flight. What all? With Benny Unson scoring again. I missed one slight switch to the tactic as well. I've had us play out of defense for the last couple of matches because I think that... That might have been part of the reason why our centre-backs were struggling with the pass. It was ruining their ratings because they were constantly misplacing passes. And I think just allowing them to knock the ball about a bit and play it in the midfield a bit more might help us. This man has just said yes to us. Malcolm Palacios, released by Baron Kia, is going to be a bloody KV. No, KF player. No, KV. Got there in the end, Matt. And because of course he is, so is Greta, or Sigurd Bre Greta Benionsson as well will be joining us. <laughs> okay, something's coming together now. Just in time to bring in a load of new guys on trials to see if we can scrounge up any more ridiculousness. Incredibly, I know that once again, because he's now technically not here on trial anymore, uh, or is he? No, he isn't. We've lost a bit of rep, but you saw how good he was. Kadu has also agreed to join us. This is nuts. Look at the tackling on the man. We've actually got this sort of the start of this cup thing starting quite soon. And usually I would just sort of cut things off as the first sort of game starts. But I think we're going to progress through that a little bit as well because... I want to get some more signings in, you know? I want to at least get to the point today of having played our first game with a load of the new signings, which will come in on the 18th. And I think we have a game later that week. So we'll probably do that as the last game. But there's still a few games before that. Okay, I, our goalkeeper's just been offered a contract by Halko. I'm going to offer him a deal properly, a full contract, because we can't really afford to lose Huggy. And we can't go over the top on the non-EU players because I think there's a limit of like three or four that you can have in a starting 11. So we've got to be careful there, particularly as we, I think we've got two already. Okay, chance for us now. In go to whip one through. And... Oh, he's there. It's, a, it's actually a penalty to us. Incredibly, we've won a penalty away at Stjarnan. Oh, go on. If we could take the lead against the top flight club, albeit in the cup, but look at this team for crying out loud. Ingo to take it, and he's... Oh, dear. Like only one team gets out of this group, and it sure as hell ain't going to be us as Rossini is now going to get himself sent off with 10 minutes to play. I have almost zero idea how, but we've actually managed to get a nil-nil draw away at Stjarnan. We had a penalty in this game as well. Mentor did nothing in the second half at all. Okay, so I'm also going to sign up Patrick Ori Pettersson because 12, 12, 11, 11, 13 height, uh, jumping reach, 6 foot 3, not amazingly slow either. Does lack a little bit of bravery, but we need another centre-back in here. I think he's the man. Particularly if he agrees to £80 pounds a week, which incredibly he has. Fan reactions, there's a lot of C pluses in here, which is surprising actually, but we, we move. Okay, so Pettersson has joined us. Okay, three star, sure, but I think he's an all right player for us. Uh, the young striker that we signed at the very start has joined us as well. Nice. Kadu is in. 
I mean, yeah, the dribbling isn't great, but come on. I think he's pretty good. Palacios is also here. And, I mean, I don't really think I need to say much more than that. He's here. Benny Unsen, of course. I'll get him working on his composure if we can, but he's been so good in those friendlies. Adarovic is just quite a good player, really, isn't he? Saidu Sanu is probably one of the more disappointing ones, if I'm honest. Thankfully, we're not paying too much for him. Um, they have severely oversold the quality of the man, sadly. Uh, great finishing, though. So I guess as a substitute option, maybe. Uh, Goodmanson is only born in midfield. I'm okay with that, honestly. Birgesson, again, backup. He can do a good job. And of course, our backup slash first choice goalkeeper as well, particularly if we were to lose Huggy is here too. Left back spot, obviously Rossini will be trained there. We definitely do need to find someone else to play there too. Uh, we've got Kadu for the right there, which is good. Midfield's looking better. There's more depth in the attacking midfield role. I still want to sort of strengthen that strike course. Femi Ajayi might be one of the guys for that role. And I think more centre-backs could definitely do us a favour as well. There's definitely more room to sign players. We need more depth anyway. Um, with the amount of players we had, we almost need to sign two squads. Ah, look at this. It's a load more players. And a guy from a club in Mozambique who for some reason we know about. Oh! <gasps> He's a regen. So I just took a complete punt on Zacharias Mutemba on an amateur contract from that Mozambique team because he's a young 18-year-old regen. We had no knowledge of the guy whatsoever. But I thought on a literal free contract, essentially, it was worth a punt. And we couldn't see much about him. And Jesus. Like <laughs> Zacharias Mutemba at 18. I mean, he's not. Like, let's face it, he's not the world beater by any means. But for 18, he's pretty bloody good. Like, I have to say, I'm impressed. Sometimes you just got to take a punt on a fringe contract. I mean, it was literally a no-brainer to do that. I've also picked up Franz Grönland uh, from PIF uh, because of his sheer magnitude in the air at six foot five. Heading isn't brilliant, but he's got good marking, good positioning. Tackling is a little on the low side, but his aggression and bravery are, are suitable. And I think at the very least, he'll give us more strength in that role. Okay, then. Match day with the new boys. Most of them. Uh, as you can see, most of the team can't play, but at least our squad is vastly bigger than it was before. Uh, so obviously that will... Oh, Rossini is suspended. Of course he is, the silly boy. So now we can have Benny Onsen in that role there. And I guess Hermanson playing beyond... Who is Hermanson? Is he one of the players that was here already? Oh no, he's the new striker, the youngster. Okay, Kadu will slot in nicely. Sigurdsson in there too. Palacios, Grunen and Christensen. Oh, let's do it. This is going to be tough as well. These guys are top flight as far as I know. We got a 0-0 draw in our first game and missed a bastard penalty. Can we go one step further and miss two penalties? Defensively, the guys have done a great job against better opposition so far. Here's Kadu, the new young Brazilian. Going with the long ball up for Sig... Oh, that's not a bad ball. And I tell you what, Hermanson's in behind here. Can he get us the lead? He's got around the goal. <laughs> Brekito Hermanson 1 0, the first goal we've scored since we took over KV, and we're leading against the top flight side. What a brilliant ball out from Kadu, but the flick on from Benny Olsen is brilliant. The defender is caught flat footed. Hermanson with the composure to go round the goalkeeper here and slot that one home. Edge of the box, he's going to go for range, surely. Oh, it's straight through a crowd of bodies, and unfortunately, Marvin Daly Steinerson can't keep it out. That was a poor one. I think he's unsighted, but Jesus, guys, come on. I mean, I'm very pleased with the lads in the first half. It's the little bit, I say concentration cost us there. It didn't really. It was just a great hit, but the keeper maybe could have done better. We're really struggling to find a way out of our own defense. Oh, that's a great ball though. And Hermanson's just not been able to do enough with that there. He has to drop that off to his teammate much, much sooner. We had a breakaway if that's the case. Trousterson. And literally from that, we've managed to concede. Dagger Trousterson gives them the lead. That's, I think that must be offside against Trousterson. No? Wow. Okay, he looked very offside to me, but that must have been a perfectly timed run. And we've been caught out through the middle again. Um, they've just managed to exploit the fact that we are trying to force them out wide. And it's worked for the most part, but he just... Oh, I think the fullback's too deep. Actually, no, I think he's just offside. <laughs> But whatever. Well, in the end, we have fallen to a defeat. I mean, I can't really complain. They had a lot of shots in this match compared to us. But we did have some opportunities in this one. I managed to take the lead. Uh, I still think their third goal was very much offside, but it happens. Not just top flight, but the reigning champions of Iceland, Matt. Like, get that in your head. <laughs> These guys are the champions of the entire country. And we've only just narrowly lost to them there. So I'm all right with that. In order to hunt down Henrik, Cali knew he needed money and help. In order to get money, he was topping up his wages from the club, working on a fishing boat out of Reykjavik. It also gave him a chance to learn about the local area and prod for any small pieces of information he could obtain. As for help, well, that would have to wait. He knew no one in the entire country, and the isolation was starting to get to him. Next episode, so you can see how the, the league season doesn't start for a very, very long time yet, but obviously I can't cram all of that into one video today because Iceland works in a very strange way, and I kind of like it at the same time, but I think next episode will encompass all of the rest of this, including those uh, other group games in there too, while we try to get this squad raring and ready to go, but I think the changes we've made so far, the players we've brought in have definitely strengthened us. We've got a couple of months more to find some more of these guys to make this team ready for the start of the new season, and I actually think that there's something here. Uh, taking the 0-0 against Stjarnan was a strong result, and then only losing 3-1 
won in a relatively even game in places against the reigning champions of Iceland does give me some confidence, I'd say. Particularly as our season preview has now moved us to ninth at 33 to 1. So I would like to get us down to sort of 15 to 1. So if you've enjoyed this, slightly disjointed, I realize, but I'm a little bit rusty at the moment too. And with these weird schedules, it's really hard to know how to structure anything like this. Drop a like, that'd be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. So go follow there too. And I'll join you guys soon for, well, I guess transfer window part two. Never had to do that before. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.